most of the resources are based on uh, Soviet era reports. They're, they're outdated reports. Um, they were, many of them were made prior to 1991. And that was before all of these international mineral reserve reporting standards were issued. And that was because of some famous stock market investment scandals like Briex Gold in the 1990s. So yeah. uh, they, they, they didn't have the standards available and they don't necessarily follow them because they're too old. And some of the earlier Soviet reports may also be based really only on surface outcrops and geologic mapping, not necessarily on any exploration, drilling, and assaying, and some of the old analytical methods employed may be, no longer be sufficient. For example, if you want to fully characterize rare earth elements in, in ore, you need inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, which is a modern analytical technique that wasn't available back uh, that long ago. Um, so I just I have problems with just the actual uh, resources versus reserves issue. One thing that I posted, posted on LinkedIn recently was a map that the HALO Trust uh, generated. They're a nonprofit. They help nations train their citizens to demine their farmlands after wars and conflicts. And they made a map that overlays the location of non landmines and undetonated ordnance in Ukraine with the, the, with the reported mineral deposit occurrences. And that's a pretty scary map. Uh, you know, just like farmers, most mining companies don't want to send their personnel and equipment into post-war areas that have not been carefully cleared of dangerous military ordnance. Uh, I can give you an example from my own state of California. There's a mountain range east of the Salton Sea called the Chocolate Mountains. It's been used by our military for decades for military target practice. And mining companies are not allowed uh, to explore those mountains, even though we suspect they contain some potentially valuable gold deposits. There's too much undetonated ordnance lying around on the ground. It would be very expensive and time-consuming to have to clean all that up just to allow uh, the act of exploration. So cleaning up valuable Ukrainian farmland so that can produce saleable crops soon after is one thing, but cleaning up an area for potential future mineral exploration and mining with a revenue timeline of many years to decades is not very attractive as an investment. So. So they have some deposits of rocks that have rare earth elements in them, but nobody's done a proper assessment of those rocks in terms of the grade and the tonnage. Uh, and all the suggestions from the reports that I've seen uh, discussed certainly online are that the, uh, both the tonnage and the grade is not that impressive for these materials. Uh, and the other issue is that most of these rare earth elements and lithium occurrences in Ukraine are in very hard rock, uh, spodumene and granitic rocks that the rare earth elements are found in. And that's very different than some of the deposits that are being mined now economically, particularly lithium from brines, solars and, and oil field and geothermal brines. And then one of the biggest rare earth element mines in the world historically has been the mountain pass mine in California, and that's carbonate rock. And it's very easy to dissolve that rock with acid and get the rare earth minerals out. But Ukraine in many ways has the same problem Greenland has, which is that whatever rare earth elements it seems to have are in very hard granitic rocks. That's going to be very costly and, and expensive uh, to extract those materials. Is it possible that Ukrainian resources actually underestimated? I because I, if I understand it, that your opinion is that it's overestimated and you know, like uh, you don't believe that it, the extraction is even feasible. Well, that's in part because uh, there was a, a great article uh, published in The Spectator in February by Owen Matthews. Uh, and, and he explains very clearly that the source for the myth of Ukraine's epic mineral researches was a November 2024 report that you can still get off the web from the Ukrainian Geological Survey, and it's called Ukraine Critical Minerals Portfolio. And it mistakenly refers to rare and rare earth metals such as tantalum, niobium, and beryllium, which are not rare earth metals. And it's really designed like an investment pitch. And tries to present Ukraine as an investment mecca for future partners. And the intention of this report apparently was to engage with the newly elected Trump team in Washington. And then weeks after that, 
this message was amplified by another report by a Lithuanian-based uh, NGO, which, although not formally affiliated with NATO, calls itself the NATO Energy Security Center of Excellence. And this report likewise claimed that trans minerals were vital for nations aiming to lessen reliance on non-democratic countries like China, Russia, and Iran. And it was a flashy brochure that likely, likewise mistakenly claims that Ukraine, Ukraine is a key potential supplier of rare earth metals, including titanium, lithium, beryllium, manganese, gallium, uranium, thorium, graphite, apatite, fluoride, and nickel, none of which are rare earth metals. Uh, but apparently, as intended, the Trump administration took the claimed rare earth element bait. And so they're all very confused, I think, about Ukraine having all, all that rare earth, as they like to say.